Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Global Adventure Show with travel writer Debbie Stone. Hey, everybody. We are back with travel writer Debbie Stone. Uh, we just did a podcast on her experience in Samoa. And now we're going to talk about her experience in the National Park of American Samoa. So in the show notes, you can uh, check out the links to her article. She has an article about the National Park um, up on nationalparktraveling.com. If you type Samoa on that site, you're going to find it. And her article about being in Samoa itself, the country, is up on blendradioandtv.com. And if you type in Samoa there as a search word, you will find it. Uh, Everything is linked in the show notes. And we are here every uh, fourth Tuesday with Debbie. And welcome back. How are you? We're doing, I'm doing good. (laughs) Hey, we're we're on a marathon here today. You know, we've got two, two for the price of one people, (laughs) two podcasts for the price of one. But um, I I love this that you went to the National Park of American Samoa, and you also went to the country. So you, you did both experiences. So um, as I recall from uh, your experience in Samoa, this national park is part of the American territory of the country of Samoa. So they are sh- kind of like two different countries. But yeah, it's, like this, we, it's, it's we it's set our territory. butt in their country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a territory of the United States. It has nothing to do, actually, with the country of Samoa. So they okay. are uh, they are an American territory. So when you go, it's an American territory. It's like going to Puerto Rico. So um, it has nothing to do other than the fact that these are Samoan people that live there. They are not Samoan nationals. So okay. they are so this part is, of the American okay. territory. They are they are American in that respect. You need to go to Guam next. I'm just saying because we got territories <laughs> out there too. Um, but but. Um, Okay, so from the last podcast, you were talking about when you drive around Amer- uh, Samoa, not American Samoa, you have to drive on the other side of the road. And in the park, the American Samoan side, you're now reverting to American driving style. So right, exactly. be adept, people. <laughs> be aware. <laughs> and so for people to know geographically, it's about 2,600 miles southwest of Hawaii, uh, is American Samoa. It's one of the most, the National Park of American Samoa, which is on American Samoa, obviously, is one of the most remote parks, national parks in the U.S. And it takes some effort, takes time to get there. Um, once again, you'll be rewarded, though, with uh, a very untouched landscape, you know, lots of beautiful coral sand beaches. There's a lot of secluded villages. There are rainforests. Um very mountainous it's uh you know land and sea and uh it's you know definitely uh you know a a an adventure uh not only to get there we took a 25 minute tiny plane from country of samoa to the territory of american samoa and you cross the international date line uh, so it can be confusing, and we left on a Tuesday morning from the country of Samoa, and we arrived on a Monday morning in American Samoa. And then you see, return, I'm blonde. We... You can't do that to me. Right? Yeah, and then we departed on a Monday afternoon and arrived back in the country of Samoa on Tuesday late afternoon. So, no. yes, and we rented a car because, uh, once again, we wanted to be able to independently explore. And, um, you know, like like you just mentioned, you will be driving on the right side, just like you drive in the United States. Um, but you go back to driving on the reverse if you go back to the country of Samoa. So the so, cars are also different at this point. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. So say that. Yeah, that's that's the that's the whole thing. Yeah. So, yes. Wow. Definitely. Wow. And so we spent our time on Tutulia, which is the main island for American Samoa. And its capital city is Pongo Pongo, even though it's spelled P-A-G-O, P-A-G-O. It's pronounced what? Pongo Pongo. Wow. And uh, this is where about half the park is located. The other half is located on a, a, a very remote island group um, where there are no restaurants, there's no bars, no shopping. You know, it's a very remote island, so it takes a lot of effort to get to to reach the other islands. Um, so we spent our time on uh the uh, the Tutuil, which is the main island, 
And um, so the National Park, it was established in 1988, but the, the Park Service couldn't buy the land because there was a it, there is a traditional communal land system that exists there. But then in 1993, they entered into a 50-year lease for the land uh, from the Samoan, uh, American Samoan Village Councils. Um, so it covers about 10,000 acres. About wow. 4,000 of those acres are underwater offshore. Ah, see, that's – see, I, I love that you bring this up because so many – parks are we actually have marine heritage areas like up in uh, washington state and you know and then like i think it was biscayne national park that you were in a lot it's really you need to be out in the water to experience it and we forget that in our national parks some of them are underwater so this is really cool yeah oh absolutely it's it's you know it's it's fascinating in that respect but then you have to realize that you know that that's you know a good portion of the park is 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 you know difficult to see because it's underwater so what you do want to see is what's on 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 land and um you can you know snorkel there you can hike there um you can take some scenic drives uh go to the national park headquarters um Center. You can talk to the rangers. Um, you'll learn about the, the unique aspects of the park. You know, it's got these special uh, protects these special coral reefs. Also, the endangered flying fox, which is a fruit bat, and uh, you know, it's cool. also uh, the park also preserves the Samoan culture. Um, so anyway, so it's it's very unique in that respect, and I, I, people don't understand that. You know, this is one. It is one of the remote places, and you know, it it only gets, you know, not too many people to come visit it versus, you know, some of the parks here yeah, on like the mainland. Yeah, like Yellowstone. Millions. Or... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just a few thousand people that would be able to, or we're not able to, but who decide to get there. So, um, wow. you know, and so once again, it is a Samoan culture uh, that dominates, um, you know, and so once again, the family is the, the core of the society, you know, with the village chiefs and and also religion being very, very uh, important. And they wear the lava lava, which is the sarong. Um, so both men mm. and women can wear the lava lava. I want to do that. You know, so it's. I mean, I love the sarongs. I think they're very comfortable and yeah. colorful, and uh, it makes sense, especially in a climate like that. <laughs> well, but also, um, you know, because you said it's humid, like you said, you be prepared. Yes. For humidity, definitely. and then you you can run in the ocean though and cool off, right? <laughs> definitely, and you'll get you know. I mean, rain comes, and it comes sometimes violently for a, a short period of time, and. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of cools everything off, but then it, it's still very humid. So, uh, you know, you, we went in winter, which is, you know, definitely time when, there, you know, rain does come. Um, but they like the rain. It keeps everything very, very green. Mm. Sounds like you got a taste of a rainforest, a lot of interesting hiking that actually goes up, right? So a lot of times we forget that islands can also be mountainous and um, you and this one is I very think... mountainous, and it's more mountainous than the actual country of Samoa. So it's, it definitely has a more mountainous topography. And, um, you know, they they suggest that you do some of these scenic uh, drives, which are really uh, wonderful. Um, they take you over these passes, and you get to these very kind of isolated villages um, that are, like, right on the water. And they're very quiet, very peaceful, very picturesque. So that was really uh, quite nice to kind of get the lay of the land. And then you can take, you know, some, they have uh, several hikes. Some of them are easy with uh, fairly flat uh, route with really good views of the of the water and of the islands. And um, then, you know, you can take a little bit more uh, challenging hikes that are steeper. They have switchbacks. Uh, they use these ladders that have ropes. Um, you know, so there's there's all different kinds of hikes, and then there's hikes that are basically not in the national park as well. Some of the hikes, um, the rangers will tell you this, that, you know, you are, uh, you know, heading kind of on private land to get somewhere. Like they told oh. us they were like, avoid these unfriendly dogs that lurk <laughs> as you're driving to get to this one hike and, and park at the end of this road, you know, because don't park near that last house because it has these very unfriendly dogs. And it was like, <laughs> so, you know, you, you, it's all, it's very homespun in that respect. 
<laughs> that's yeah you, you, you <laughs> i but you know what i really miss that kind of thing you know i kind of miss that you know africa was kind of like that and so i i miss those kind of fun kind of little you you went on an adventure can we just say that samoa was an adventure right this was like a definitely. big epic adventure yeah um it, definitely a different country <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a different country. So, and I know they get a lot of hurricanes and you talk about that in your article too. Yes. Um, so yes. that's something to be aware of when you're making plans. But I also want to touch on the fact that it's uh, American Samoa is this, you know, how we have these parks in these U.S. territories is usually connected to some kind of military history or war. And for the American Samoa, this was, you know, when you think about the Pacific Theater in World War II, and I know in when you've been to Hawaii, you you experienced that. You went to Pearl Harbor, so did this kind of connect at all for you doing this? Oh yeah, going I out think there. It's all, it's all a part of that, you know. That her, there's a heritage trail that you know has some uh, World War II installations, and basically they were helping protect American Samoa from a Japanese invasion. So wow. yeah, a lot some of these islands you will find that to be the case. You know, there is remnants of the military, you know, presence there. Um, American Samoa is really known um, also for its export of tuna, which mm. is kind of interesting. Um, so canned tuna is their main. You'll see as you're driving along the island uh, in the Pongo Pongo area that you'll see these uh, tuna canning plants. And I remember mm. seeing like star kissed and, you know, this kind of thing. And you're like, really? Oh, yeah, oh, wow. definitely, definitely. And I was wow. so wanting to see a flying fox. I know. As soon as I, I was, I'm like, oh, come on, come on. So l- lodging wise, so you're going to stay in Pongo, Pongo. I'm glad you're pronouncing everything, but Pongo Pongo, is that where you stay overnight? Because it seems like the People, park is kind of remote. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, the park is right outside of, I mean, right outside the city. Uh, but, you know, I, we since we only spent the day there and went back to the country of Samoa, but people who do come to American Samoa and spend a night or two would stay in Pongo Pongo because that's the only place that they would have okay. uh, any lodging. And, you know, it's very on a, a small scale in terms of restaurants or, you know, no high rises, nothing, you know, and a few shops. Oh, and, sounds good uh, to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, 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 you know, and the, the Harbor of Pongo Pongo, you know, it's beautiful. It's just dramatic backdrop, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's quite spectacular, you know, so, um, yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to do a real deep dive into American Samoa and, you know, spend a lot of time and hike a lot, you know, then you'd want to spend a night or two so that you would have some time, you know, there, you know. Um, so I know this it's is... Not, it's not big, you know, it's not that yeah. big of a place, you know. I know you're on the quest to do the 63 national parks. Um, where are you now on that list? Well, in June, we are doing um, Voyager uh, in Minnesota. Oh. And we are doing Isle Royal, which is in Michigan. And, and isn't uh, that the one are... that you have to kayak in yep. or something? Well, yeah, we're doing a float plane from uh, Minnesota over to Isle Royal and spending two oh, nights, my gosh, that's nights epic. over there. And then Voyager is way up there at the International Falls uh, boundary line up near Canada. So, uh, yeah, that those are two other national parks that are definitely, you know, takes a little effort to get to. And so, yeah. you know, you, you leave the ones that, I, and then we, after that, we have a few more in Alaska, which are, are, are also very challenging and we won't do those until next year, but that's something you have to work out if you're going to go to the gates of the Arctic or Lake Clark. I mean, these are, these are tough places to get to, you know, you need, you know, little planes, bush planes, whatever to, you know, get to places. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll do a couple more. So after, after Michigan and Minnesota, we probably have about four more. They're, they're all Alaska. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love these adventures, you know, parks are good, aren't they? They're wonderful. Good for and they're so they're... unique. And, you know, each one is so unique, you know, and I, I'm always fascinated to see, oh, what, what's, what's the emphasis here? You know, what, what's, what's, what's the, what's the reasoning behind, uh, you know, it's a high level a of protection. Bar. It's the highest yes. level of protection Absolutely. for any land. And, and you think about like, you know, people could talk about African safaris and going out in, in nature and everything like that. And in Africa and, you know, and I'm like, America started it before Africa, <laughs> you know, we started the <laughs> national park system. And, and the protection something to be and conservation. Yeah. It's, it's something to be proud of, you know, and we just drove through um, 
parts of New Mexico and went past White Sands, which is the first Yay! time I've even had a glimpse. <laughs> and I was just dying. And we had to keep going because like storms oh. and stuff. And I'm like, Nancy and I are sitting there going, ah, you know, because it's one of our newer, yeah. I mean, it's been a national monument, but it is now preserved in right. that status, which I think is so great. And the the way the mountains are, oh my gosh, yeah. the Oregon mountains are, I mean, it's just all of a sudden how you have this sand it's like it just said, hello, here I am. You know, it's pretty mind-blowing, actually, it's when you think about it. It's very mind-blowing. That's one of the more unique, you know, places. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just you're out there and you're in the middle of white sands and you have to really pay attention to, to uh, certain posts that are out there because you can get lost and it's very, you know, challenging that way, if, especially if it's hot, you know. Yeah, so. and you did Great Basin, and I was kind of hoping we would be able to do that on our way to Texas, but... The weather said no um, yeah. <laughs> with all these yeah. winter storms this country has been going through. <laughs> and um, I was just going, dude, we could do it. You know, you know, that's how I talk everywhere. Dude, uh, I am from Southern California originally, <laughs> apparently. So, <laughs> but the Great Basin, you did that. And I, I, you know, they say that that is, you know, Gua- Guadalupe Mountain is one I want to really do. Because I think it's kind of like Great Basin in that it is actually a four season park with four seasons because yeah. of the different topography, like the different like microclimates and like it's mountain. But then you can see, you know, spring wildflowers and cactus and things. Um, I don't, have you done yeah, Guadalupe Mountain? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. In West Texas. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. We did it from uh, drove there from Carlsbad. So getting over there oh that's but, right uh, carlsbad yep. caverns yeah and carl another one another national park so uh, oh, boy. yeah no uh, you know and great basin is is fascinating you know it's got this dry glacier which is really interesting you know it's these fascinating trees and you know it's just it's it's very interesting and somewhat a little bit of prehistoric in in many ways you know and uh, you're out there too there's not a whole lot of services out there as well so it's it's uh you know, Nevada and uh, mm. uh, Utah, basically. So, I'd like uh, yeah. it, though. We need to have yeah. these places where you disconnect and remember that phones used to be this thing that you, you know, <laughs> played one ringy dingy with going, you know, <laughs> you know, back in the day when there were switchboards, you know. Um, but it's also really nice to just decompress. And so I think, you know, that you're doing some of these epic parks are just, it's so exciting for people to know about it. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, the link again are in the show notes for her article, articles, so you can learn about both Samoa and also America Samoa as a national park as well. And you can go to nps.gov forward slash NPSA as well for more information directly with the National Park Service. Thank you so much, Fire Monkey. Next time we're going to be talking about Hawaii, right? That's our next thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Safe travel. All right. You too. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Big Blend Radio's Global Adventures Show with travel writer Debbie Stone. Debbie is here every fourth Tuesday. You can keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. <laughs>